Welcome, my dear friends. Uh, it's Dr. Anuradha Dhawan here. And uh, today's video is a quick revision of your important images for the upcoming FMG exam. This is part one of the video in which we'll be discussing mostly the interior segment images. And there will be another part two video in which we'll be discussing the important frontus images. So as we know, the image-based questions, they are favorite with the examiner. They can come as spot diagnosis. They can come as a part of the clinical case scenario. So the purpose of this video is to make you revise all the images which can help us in the upcoming exam. Okay, so here are your must do of the images for FMG exam. Once again, I welcome you to today's video. And uh, I would just like to let you know that you can contact me on my email. I'm there at the Telegram as well as on the Instagram. So for further sharing or discussing anything, I'm always available with you. So friends, Anuradha Dhawan welcoming you to today's quick video on the FMG must do images, okay? Now, so first image which we can, uh, which we are going to do right now is here in front of you. And as you see, it's a very common image. So what you are seeing here in this image is giant papillae, okay? So what are giant papillae? They are the big sized papillae. The papillae, they are round lesions, raised lesions, but flat topped that the upper part is flat topped, the center is reddish in color. So this is how you identify the papillae. Mostly they are present on the upper tarsal conjunctiva. Okay? Now, if this kind of picture of giant papillae is there, which gives a cobblestone appearance to the conjunctiva, now this kind of picture is usually seen in two kinds of con conditions. Okay? So you have to see that what is the other clue in the question to identify this image. Now, if the case scenario is of a young boy, for example, 10 year old boy with the complaints of itching ropey discharge, which worsens in summer, then the diagnosis will be vernal keratoconjunctivitis or spring cathar. Okay? So then you can be sure that this image is a case of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Okay? However, coming to the second scenario in which similar kind of giant papillae are seen giving cobblestone appearance to the conjunctiva, but the clinical case scenario is of a young adult with the history of use of soft contact lenses. So we know soft contact lenses, they can also cause allergic conjunctivitis, which can present with the symptoms of itching and irritation, then your diagnosis becomes giant papillary conjunctivitis, okay? So similar kind of the clinical image can be seen in the giant papillary conjunctivitis, but here papillae will always be giant. However, in VKC, papillae, they are not always giant. There can be normal sized papillae also, but similar image if is seen depending upon what is the clinical case scenario. So your diagnosis can be VKC in young boy with symptoms worsening in summer, and giant papillary conjunctivitis in an adult with history of soft contact lenses and allergic symptoms. So this is first important case scenario there. Now, another favorite and commonly asked question in the exam is of corneal ulcers. Now in the corneal ulcer, if the image is like this, in which you see dry raised infiltrates on the cornea, you can see there is a large infiltrate on the cornea, which is dry and raised with indistinct margins. There is a large hypopion and very classically what is marked by the arrow over here, what is known as satellite lesions. Now these satellite lesions are hallmark feature of fungal corneal ulcer. They can ask you as a spot diagnosis also that, you know, name the lesion marked by the arrow. This was a question in the past exam also. So you can see there is a main ulcer there is a main ulcer area and then there are the satellite lesions. Another clue about this image can be if they give you a history of trauma with vegetative matter, if a patient is a farmer or a field worker. So then the diagnosis is fungal corneal ulcer. You can identify it by indistinct margins, dry raised infiltrates and satellite lesions. 
Okay, so this is your fungal cornea ulcer, my friends. Then commonly asked spot diagnosis. Again, they can ask you to identify the lesion here or identify the image here. Now, typical branching tree-like pattern is seen as you see here, the ulcer is in the form of a dendritic ulcer. So here is a fluorescent staining of the ulcer which you are seeing. And these are the dendritic ulcer, which is feature of herpes simplex viral keratitis. Herpes simplex viral keratitis, dendritic ulcer. There can be an additional point sometimes given in the history that if the corneal sensations are reduced, but this can be asked as a spot diagnosis also, dendritic corneal ulcer. Okay. Then moving on to another image, you see the slit lamp image and you can notice here very clearly from the, it's a lateral image and you can see the shape of the cornea is altered. The shape of the cornea is conical, which is seen in keratoconus. Okay. So if this kind of image come, you can clearly notice a conical cornea here, which is seen in keratoconus. In the history, they can tell you that there is a young person, usually a male patient with history of frequent change of classes because it causes irregular astigmatism, which is not satisfactorily corrected with the classes. So patient is not happy with the classes. There can be other features in the history regarding the signs seen in keratoconus, Rizuti sign, the scissoring reflex on retinoscopy or all droplet sign or Vogue's trial. So if they are mentioned in the history, again, they are a clue. If this image is given as a spot diagnosis, you can identify this as your keratoconus. Then identify this sign. So again, you see the patient is looking down and you can clearly make out that the shape of the cornea is conical. And because of this conical shape of the cornea, the lower lid is becoming V-shaped when the patient is looking down. The lower lid is becoming V-shaped when the patient is looking down. So this is image of Munson's sign in keratoconus. So please remember Munson's sign in keratoconus. Then a white foamy spot seen on the bulbar conjunctiva. Okay? So if you see this kind of white foamy frothy spot, especially mostly on the temporal bulbar conjunctiva, along with the history of vitamin A deficiency, dryness of the conjunctiva, dryness of the cornea, that is coronal, corneal xerosis, or a symptom of night blindness, then this is your bited spot. So with the clue in the history, with the typical appearance of this lesion, white foamy lesion, you can clearly make a diagnosis of bited spot. Then again, if this image is there, Okay, so have a look at the image there and try to see how the appearance of the cornea is here. So you can see whole of the cornea is opacified. Not only opacified, the cornea is bulging forward. The cornea is bulging forward. You can notice this, which is called as ectasia of the cornea. Now, this kind of the picture, if you clearly notice, there is also kind of, you know, uveal hue. It's a darkish hue there. So this bulging out of the cornea is a sequelae of complicated corneal ulcer in which iris tissue is incarcerated along with. Okay? And this kind of the lesion is known as anterior staphyloma. Interior staphyloma. In the history, they can give you a history of malnourishment or immunocompromised history in which the cornea becomes ulcerated, the corneal ulcer becomes complicated, and then it can lead on to the appearance of interior staphyloma as a sequelae of corneal ulcer. Okay, friends? Right. Moving on to another common lesion which is seen and given in the exam as an image diagnosis, your pterygium. So how do we identify pterygium? Very easy, a fold of the conjunctiva a triangular wing-like fold of the conjunctiva, usually starting from the nasal part of the eye and covering the cornea, covering the cornea. Now, it can encroach till limbus, till the central area. So it encroaches upon the cornea. So a fleshy, triangular, wing-like growth arising mostly from the nasal conjunctiva, though it can be from the temporal part, encroaching the cornea is your pterygium, friends. Then, lately, the trauma has been a very favorite 
topic with the examiners and there are certain signs which appear following the blunt trauma which can be seen in the interior segment so if there is a history of blunt trauma and they give you an image like this in which you see a cataract which is like a rosette so rosette type of the cataract following the history of blunt trauma so your diagnosis is clear it's a traumatic cataract it's a traumatic cataract, which is usually rosette cataract. Okay? Besides the cataract, two other signs they can be seen following blunt trauma. One is your look at the arrow marking a brownish pigment ring on the surface of the lens, interior surface of the lens, which is known as wasseous ring. It is the deposition of the pigment from the pupil on the interior surface of the lens. Okay, And secondly, there can be iridodialysis, that the iris gets detached from its root, leading to iridodialysis, and this makes the pupil D-shaped. This makes the pupil D-shaped. So these are the two more images which they can show with a history of blunt trauma, or they can ask you, identify the wasseous ring or identify the iridodialysis. So this is here for your revision, friends. Then coming on to another kind of image, which can be shown usually with a case scenario. So what they will be the case scenario, there is a newborn child brought by the parents with the history of watering, photophobia, and large cornea, large cornea. Now this cornea can be clear. If, as you are noticing here, this can be hazy. So either of this, but the cornea is large. And not only the cornea is large, the whole of the eyeball is also large. So then it's a case of buphthalmos or congenital glaucoma. Buphthalmos or congenital glaucoma. Okay? Large cornea, large eyeball, the cornea can be clear or hazy with the history of watering and photophobia goes in favor of diagnosis of buphthalmos or congenital glaucoma. Then another case scenario and the image which can be presented along with that is image of a patient who is having red eye and painful decrease in vision. Okay? So here, if you notice, there will be signs of the red eye. There will be irregular pupil due to the posterior synechy. There can be keratic precipitate seen on the slit lamp image, and even there can be a hypopion in certain cases. So these slit lamp image signs, okay? red eye, irregular pupil, keratic precipitates, they can ask you to identify the lesion, which is actually the keratic precipitates, this is a case of anterior uveitis. So these are the signs you will look for on the slit lamp image to make a diagnosis of anterior uveitis if similar picture comes there. Then the images that have been coming regarding the lid swelling. Now in the lid swelling, there can be history of painless lid swelling or nodule. So when there is a painless lid swelling or nodule, which is away from the lid margin, see, away from the lid margin. This is your lid margin. Here it is away from the lid margin. Painless swelling, then it is a clasion. It is a clasion because here it is a inflammation of the meibomian gland and it is not infectious. So it is painless. In contrast, in contrast, if there is a painful lid swelling at the lid margin, you see, at the lid margin in relation to the eyelashes, painful swelling, then it is a sty or external hodiolum because that is the suppurative inflammation, infection of the glands of thighs, and you can make out it is in relation of the eyelashes. So painful lid swelling at lid margin, you will differentiate it from clasion. It is your sty or external hodiolum. Okay. So these were the some important images, my friends, which I wanted you to go through a quick revision for you. And at the same time, I'll be coming up with the part two video in which we'll be going through the important fundus images for you. So bye for now. All the best. Keep preparing and keep your spirits high. All the best, my dear friends.